In this demonstration, we will see how we can configure a model of an electromechanical actuator for hill testing. We have a model of an electromechanical actuator. We are satisfied with its performance in desktop simulation. We now wish to reuse it for hardware in the loop testing. However, portions of our model are numerically stiff. We need to configure the solvers of the model so that it is real time capable and convert it to C code so we can put it on the hardware in the loop system. We will use Simscape local solvers and Simulink Coder to do this. Here are the steps that we'll go through. First, we will configure our model to use a fixed step, fixed cost solver appropriate for hill testing. We will rerun the simulation on the desktop to ensure that we get comparable results. We will then convert this model to C code and download it to the real time target. Once there, we will rerun the simulation to ensure that we get the same results and that it runs fast enough so that it doesn't generate any overruns. Finally, we will do our test. We will vary a parameter in the physical system and see how the control system reacts. I will now switch over to the model so you can see how this is done. Here is our electromechanical model of an actuator for an aileron system. Here you can see the electrical model which has a motor, a worm gear, and a lead screw. And if we go back up to the top level, we can see the three-dimensional mechanical model of the aileron. When we run the simulation, we will see how the aileron moves. As the actuator extends and contracts, the aileron moves through a certain angle following a reference signal. If we go back to our simulation to the top level, on the scope we can see how the aileron moves, and we see that it is tracking a reference profile reasonably well. We now wish to configure this model so that it can be used for hardware in the loop testing. To do that, we're going to use this MATLAB script to walk us through the steps. The first step is to generate a set of reference results that we can use to verify that our fixed step solver settings are accurate. So we will rerun the model with our variable step solver and save those results on a figure window. Now we will use these MATLAB commands to configure the model to run with a fixed step solver and then compare those to our set of reference results. So here is our fixed step solver ODE3 and we have enabled the Simscape local solver. If we go back into our model and look at the solver configuration block, we can see we have enabled the local solver and we have enabled fixed cost computation. That means we are limiting the amount of computation per time step, which will help us avoid overruns on the real time system. Going back up to the top level, we will take those results and add them to our plot. And if we look closely at these results, we can see that the simulation with the fixed step results matches our reference results pretty closely, close enough for the test that we're going to run. Now we have our model configured to run with a fixed step solver and we believe the speed is fast enough to run in real time. We're now going to configure the runtime parameters for our system. These are the parameters that we wish to tune on the real time hardware. We want to change the value of this resistor on the real time target during hardware in the loop testing. So we are going to configure this to be a runtime parameter. This means we can vary the behavior of the physical system in simulation. This is what we would do in hardware in the loop testing, where we would, we would vary the behavior of the physical system and see how the embedded hardware, and software, embedded hardware and software behave. Now that we have configured our solvers and selected our runtime parameter, we are going to generate code and download it to the real-time target. If we switch over to the MATLAB window, we can see the messages being generated as the C code is created. And here we can see our real-time target, which is running Simulink real-time, and a monitor where we can monitor the behavior of the simulation. We'll see, a plot. we'll see a plot shown on the monitor. We'll also be able to monitor the progress of the simulation on a Simulink scope as we execute in external mode. So the model is now on the real-time target. We will configure to run in external mode so that we can see how things are going on the Simulink scope. Then we will connect to the target and run the simulation. So the model is now running. You can see the behavior of the model on the monitor and you can see that it is synchronized with the results on the scope. At the conclusion of our 10 second simulation we will upload the results and see how they compare with the results we received in, in earlier runs. And we can see they match the fixed step simulation results from our desktop exactly and are fairly close to the results of our reference simulation. Now that we have confirmed that our model runs fast enough on the real-time hardware and doesn't generate overruns, we are going to change the value of that resistor. Using the commands getParam and setParam, we are going to change we are going to reduce the value of that resistance by a factor of three. 
Then using the command start, we are going to rerun the simulation. You can see the behavior of the simulation on the monitor. We're not running in external mode this time, so the results are not being updated on the scope. And at the conclusion of this test, we will upload those results to, this, to our figure window and compare. And we can see that we have changed the resistance value without regenerating C code, and we can see that the results of the physical system have changed. This would enable us to use this model in hardware in the loop testing, again changing the behavior of the physical system and seeing how the embedded hardware and software behave. In this demonstration we have seen how we can configure a Simscape model for hardware in the loop testing.